It's 31 Days to Wise, Betty Smoot Madison. Um, we are on day 15. So today's message is wise prayers. And I wanted to focus on wise prayers because um, chapter 15 kind of, it, it has a couple of verses that um, speaks about um, the prayers of the righteous. So um, I figured that's a good topic for, for today. So verse eight says, the Lord detests the sacrifice of the wicked, but the prayers of the upright pleases him. The prayers of the upright pleases him. And upright is just, just means that you are right in God's eyes, um, that you are righteous, fair, just person, good, good people, wise. <laughs> Okay, so the prayers of the wise pleases him. Um, it also says in verse 29, the Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. He hears the prayers of the righteous. Um, prayer for me is absolutely a life strategy. Um, you should be praying over every single area in your life. Like there should be no area that is exempt from your prayers. So your family, your children, your spouse, your job, your work, your career, your business, or all of your businesses, um, your travels, extended family, anything that is attached to you, you should be covering in prayer. Um, so I thought um, I would just give a few pointers in how to have or start to build strong prayers um, and this is just, um, how I shape my prayers. And it's kind of, um, similar to the Lord's prayer as well. Um, the Lord's prayer has a little bit of, um, order to it. Um, and so I kind of build my prayers in the same way. So I, I think, the best way to start your prayers is to start with thanksgiving. Start with a heart of gratitude. Come from a place of gratitude. Being thankful for where you are in life. Um, even if you feel like you're not in a great place, if you feel like you are not in the place God intended you to be, if you are not, even if you are just not in, even if you're at your lowest point, even if you're at your lowest point, there's always something to be grateful for. Um, there's always a worse situation. <laughs> so we have to always position ourselves in, um, from a place of gratitude. And that's how better starts to take place. That's how better starts to happen. That's how your life starts to transform is when you are grateful, when you are thankful, when you express gratitude, um, for where you are. If you need to start with just three things every day that you are uh, grateful for, life, health, and strength, simple things. Thank you, God, for life, health, and strength. And if you don't have those three things, I'm sure there is something else that you have, right? There's, there's, there's shelter, there's food, having a home, despite whether you rent or own, it doesn't matter. Having a home, having food, being in your right mind. Is something to be thankful for because there are so many people out here that are not in their right mind. All right. So there's always things that you can be grateful for. So just thanking God for um, where you are right now. I'm thankful for this place I'm in right now. I know this isn't it. And I know this is not where I will end. I know you have better, but I am thankful for right now. Um, so it's, um, starting out with Thanksgiving, starting out with gratitude, um, is always a good, um, way to start your prayers. Next, I like to go into, you know, just acknowledging who God is in my life, acknowledging that he is the head of my life, that, um, he is my go-to source. He is my source of knowledge, my source of power, my source of authority, my source of strength. So just acknowledging um, who he is um, 
in your life is uh, usually how, you know, I like to start off. God, you are the head of my life. You are an unfailing love. Um, you are Yahweh. You are all existence. You are all knowing. So just just expressing and acknowledging who he is in your life um, is what I usually go into next. And then um, the next uh, thing is repentance. You always want to include repentance in your prayers. And I know repentance is a tough subject for a lot of folks. That is a word that a lot of people don't like to hear. You know, it has this submissiveness to it that, you know, in today's world, submissive is like a bad, it's like a curse word. <laughs> so it is like the the worst for some people. But submissive just places you in a, it puts you in a place of humility. Um, and it acknowledges that I'm not perfect, right? So being able to go to my God and say, God, I know I'm not perfect. I know I've messed up. I know I created this situation. Forgive me. I repent for what I did. Forgive me. And I really don't want to repeat that situation. I really don't want to repeat that behavior. So I'm bringing it to you. I'm laying it before you, God. Um, I think people don't realize how much they, how much of their past and how much of their history they carry with them. And it really does create a cycle of um, emotional trauma. All of the guilt, all of the shame, all of the hurt, all of the anger that you carry with you because you haven't laid it before God, it, it messes with your mental state. It messes with your emotional state. All right. And you really can't be healed from those and delivered from those until you've presented it to God, repented for it and said, God, I need help here. I need you to help me in this situation. I bring this to you and I want to leave it with you. <laughs> I want to leave it here. I, I can't carry this baggage with me any longer. So I'm bringing it to you and I'm leaving it with, with, with you. And I need to know how I can heal from it. I need your healing from this. All right. So repentance, include that in your prayer. You know, it's again, just acknowledging that we're not perfect people. So repentance is not a bad thing. Next, after the, you know, after Thanksgiving, after acknowledging God and worshiping him, after repenting, then comes then you can lay down your request. What is your prayer about? What are you asking God for in this prayer? What are you asking God for today? What are you asking God for this week or this month? All right. So um, one of the things that I like to do is each week, I usually write out at the top of the week, um, I write out the things that I want to pray for all week long. I just write them out. Family my family, my husband, my children, my job, whatever situations I'm dealing with at the time. And that week, if I have major things coming up, if I have an event coming up, if I have a speaking engagement, if I'm traveling, I'm praying for God's uh, protection in that week as I travel, Anything, whatever I have coming up, whatever, whatever I have coming up, whatever situations I'm dealing with in that week, whatever is going on in my life, I'm praying for those things. Um, prayer for wisdom, you know, again, you know, prayer for wisdom is a recurring theme. It's every day. God give me wisdom to deal with whatever comes up today, whatever it is. And, and God will give you intel. He will give you insight and knowledge. Um, in order to make wise decisions every day. Um, I talked about this before, Bible verses. I, I like to incorporate what God says about a situation. Um, I, it, just including his word in your prayers. It just makes it that much stronger. God, in Proverbs 15, 26, you said this. And so I'm 
holding you on your word, God. I trust you. I believe your word. And so I'm holding you on it. And I'm, I'm um, yeah, I'm expecting. I'm, I have expectations based on your word. Okay. So it's good to build that in. Um, of course, like to be able to do that, it does require you to read and study the Bible. Um, if you are, you know, I know that the Bible is not easy to read. <laughs> it's not easy to read. It's not easy to, easy to understand and interpret. Um, it's always good to have different versions or different translations so that you can help interpret what it's saying. I always, if you're not a Bible reader um, and you do are interested in starting to read the Bible, I, the message version is a really good one um, because it just, it just speaks, it, it translated into today's language. <laughs> you could read the message version like it's a normal book, right? It gives you the word in plain language. Um, and then, then you can go back to whatever other version you want to study, whether it's KJV or NIV or, or whatever, um, and compare what's being said. And then it's like, okay, that's what that is saying. Because there are a lot of parables. There are a lot of things in the Bible that's just difficult to interpret. So, um, and then if you're not, again, if you're, you're still not really a Bible reader, like there's plenty of devotionals there's plenty of journals out there that incorporate bible um verses so that's always a good start so there's there's plenty of ways that you can start to incorporate god's word into your life um and then you want to close out with just thanksgiving again just saying god i'm thanking you for what you are about to do i'm thanking you in advance for making these situations that i prayed for better for covering me for protecting me as i've asked you to um, so again, just kind of um, thanking God in advance for what, um, so you started out thanking him for what he's already done and where he's brought you to, and then you're ending and closing with what he's about to do. All right. And then, so again, that's, those are some key tips of how you can start to build a strong prayer life. Um, again, for me, prayer is a life strategy. Like I cannot win at life and be successful for the long term for generations without prayer. Um, one other thing that you can start to do that I love to do is keep a prayer journal. Um, that's uh, something that I started maybe like three years ago. I started keeping a journal and writing my prayers out, just writing my prayers out so that I could um, go back to them, you know, and, you know, read them as I needed to. I kind of, I put my prayers in they're kind of organized by topic. So, um, you know, like I'll, I'll have a prayer specifically about health. I'll have a prayer about, um, my career. I'll have a prayer about, um, my marriage, a prayer about my children, a prayer about my business strategy. Like I have prayers for specific topics. Um, and it helps me just kind of like, if I need to revisit that prayer, I can go back to that and, pray it. Um, and I can always add on to it if I need to, but a prayer journal is a great way to go. And it helps you see where God has brought you from. Has Did God answer those prayers? But it's amazing to be able to go back and see, did God answer these prayers? So keep a prayer journal. That's all I have to say. I am way over my time, but I hope um, that this message starts to, if you don't already, I'm sure many of you are already you know, prayer feel, filled people. Um, but if you are someone that hasn't really built prayer into your life, I hope that this helps you um, start to, um, or gives you something to start with. All right. Um, that's day 15, wise prayers. And I will see y'all tomorrow for day 16. Thank you. See y'all later. Bye.